Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the Rolex Explorer 2. It's been my daily wear watch for a little while now, and I just hope to give you a nice owner's perspective on the pros and the cons of the model. I'll start with the pros. For Rolex, it has some very solid value. There isn't another sports model from them that gives you as much for the money. The star of the show, in my opinion, is the movement. Now, my reference has the newer 3186 movement. This is a true GMT caliber with an added date complication, and it utilizes Rolex's anti-magnetic blue parachrome hairspring. My particular watch is uh, an M serial with a fall of 2007 production, so it also has the proprietary 904L steel, the solid end links with the protruding center link, as well as that engraved rehot. Now the engraved rehot, that is the chapter ring that has the company's coronet logo engraved at the 12 o'clock, as well as the type Rolex engraved at each hour marker. And then lastly, the watch's unique serial number is engraved at the six o'clock position. This serial number, this will match the engraving in the case in between the lugs that's hidden by the end link. Uh, most people think the engraved rehot is just a vain branding play, but uh, in my opinion, it is an attractive uh, looking anti-counterfeiting measure. So this will help aid you in correctly authenticating a potential purchase. This watch features a little precious metal. The hands and indices are fashioned out of 18 karat gold and coated with a nice black lacquer. You'll notice that they aren't a flat black, but there is an ever so slight sheen and reflectance to them. It also features the popular polar white dial. This is a brilliant white uh, where the hands, the indices, and the text, the printing really pops. So if you look at the center of the hands as well as the surround of the date cutout, you'll notice a very faint sheen at the edges. It's very subtle, it's a nice finish, and it's really well done. Some enthusiasts complain of this smaller 39 millimeter case size. Uh, especially those that have larger wrists. I understand that sentiment. Um, and if you like a larger watch, I, I wouldn't recommend this model. Um, but I will say from my experience using this, I do enjoy the traditional size. It feels a little more like a 40 and I find it very comfortable, very practical. Um, while it's on, I think it looks, uh, I think it looks perfect on my 7.25 inch wrists. I love the thinner proportions of the lugs, the hands, the indices. Um, I do like the new maxi cases and dials, but admittedly there is a bit of magic or charm about these uh, pre-maxi proportions. A lot of Rolex enthusiasts view this as the primo in, uh, in the aesthetic production. Another thing I really enjoy is the fact that this is a sports watch. Uh, the Explorer 2 was originally intended as a spelunking watch, <laughs> a watch to be used when caving. Now, I've only been spelunking once and I didn't have this watch on at the time, but it is pretty cool knowing that unique history and the intention of this design. I'm a casual guy. I like using my watches in water. I like the twin lock crown on this one and the 100 meters of water resistance that it provides. That's more than enough for me. I enjoy the peace of mind knowing that I never need to worry about this watch um, in just about any activity. It has all the history, the versatility, and the functionality that I need. Now let's talk about the dislikes. The big one that you hear most often is the pressed metal clasp and the hollow center links in the bracelet. I will say I much prefer the newer, heavier, solid milled out clasp and center links of the current lineup. Uh, there's no question about that. But I will say don't discount these older clasps too quickly. Yes, they are lightweight, but they're adjustable. They're very comfortable and this doesn't affect the performance. They hold up very well over the years. The next dislike is the Loom. Now, these later versions of the 16570 have Super Luminova. You'll notice mine is just beginning to develop a little age, which is nice. And the Loom is actually quite bright, as you can see this, uh, this good green glow. 
However, it doesn't last that long and it does fade rather quickly. So I've stopped wearing this one at night as I just can't make out the time in the early hours of the morning. The modern 216570 reference does have the maxi chromolite loom um, and the maxi hands and indices and it is really good. But um, this is what you can expect on these older 16570s. The last negative in my eyes is the lack of anti-reflective coating on this sapphire crystal and cyclops. It's something that Rolex just doesn't do on any of their models. Now I personally prefer a good application of AR and I think it would help sharpen that beautiful dial and bring the level of functionality up a notch, but it's just not something that they do. Now I've talked with Rolex dealers and they've told me that Rolex doesn't do AR coding because the current technology isn't up to their standards. And when or if they do roll it out, it will be the best in the business. But until the, that time, no AR coding. Now I don't necessarily agree with that. I think Rolex simply realizes people love their watches and they will buy them regardless of whether or not they have AR coding. So, it's just one less cost, one less step in the production process for them. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. Hands down, this has been one of the most satisfying watches I've ever owned. It makes a fantastic daily wear piece. I definitely understand the current draw and popularity the model is experiencing. It's very solid, sensible, and in my opinion, one of the most attractive sport designs that Rolex has offered or currently offers. It performs flawlessly, generally flies under the radar, and no one in my circle of associates has actually watched, uh, has actually noticed the watch, and I enjoy that. I enjoy looking down at my wrist, and apart from getting the local time, the date, or the GMT time, I see the Rolex name and branding. Now, that might sound silly, that might sound vain, you may be rolling your eyes uh, at me through the screen, but there is something exciting and wonderful about owning and using a Rolex. It's more than about desirability or value retention. It's about the satisfaction of knowing that you own and use one of the most solid all-around watches that money can buy. Yes, they cost a pretty penny. Yes, there are a host of other solid and desirable brands and models out there, but there is something tangible and immensely satisfying about wearing a Rolex as a daily driver. Some snobs call them the best beater watches, I prefer to call them one of the best daily wear quality watches that you can buy. And this Explorer 2 is right up there at the top. So I hope you get a chance to experience one for yourself or at least one from the brand if you haven't done so already. So thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, until next time.